This section will take approximately 30 minutes to be completed. In this section, we will learn about the various types of fractures. We will further learn about signs and symptoms that will indicate that the bone has a fracture. Lastly, we will also learn how to manage a patient who is the victim of a fracture. A fracture is a broken bone. The bone may be broken into two or more pieces with separation of the fragments or it may have one or more fissured cracks without any separation. Most fractures are caused by direct force, but force may be transmitted through the body to cause injury indirectly elsewhere. In simple terms, a fracture may be open to infection or closed to infection. There are many types of fractures, but the main categories are closed fracture and open fracture. Open fracture may require surgery, whereas closed fracture do not have a break in the skin and are identified by swelling and bruises. A closed fracture is a break or crack in the bone that does not come through the skin, but sometimes causes injury to tissues in the area. A closed fracture can vary in severity, depending on what bone is affected and how large the crack or break is. Because the skin is not opened in a closed fracture, the risk of infection or complications from exposure to the air is low. What causes a closed fracture? A closed fracture is usually caused by an injury to the bone as the result of a fall, accident, or other trauma. Disorders that weaken the bones in the body, such as osteoporosis and cancer, put some people at higher risk for injury. What do I need to know about caring for someone with a closed fracture? Keeping the broken bone from moving is very important to the healing process. Once a doctor treats the fracture, you can care for someone with the condition by helping them manage the pain, assist with any activities that they can no longer do on their own as a result of the break, and follow any medical advice. What are the symptoms of a closed fracture? Most people who experience a closed fracture will have pain, bruising, and swelling. Other symptoms might include being unable to move the area or having an abnormal bend or twist in the limb. Some people hear a snap or crack when the break occurs. For basic treatment for these injuries, use the acronym RICE. Get medical help as soon as possible. Go through the below given table at your own pace to understand better. An open fracture, also called a compound fracture, occurs when the end of a broken bone breaks the skin open. Because of the open skin, the risk of a dangerous infection is very high with this type of fracture, and a doctor's immediate care is vital. Surgery is sometimes required. Screws, wires, plates, or other devices are used to hold the fracture in the right position for healing. Unless there are complications, your fracture should take 3 to 10 weeks to heal. What causes an open fracture? An open or compound fracture happens when enough force hits the bone to cause it to break and stick out through the skin. It can happen as a result of falling, such as falls from bicycles. When playing sports, a bone may be hit directly, which may also cause this kind of fracture. Twists, collisions, and accidents, such as car crashes, may cause these fractures too. What are the symptoms of an open fracture? The sign of an open fracture or compound fracture is when the end of a broken bone can be seen through an opening in the skin. Other symptoms include swelling and pain. At times, you may see bruises from bleeding going on inside the body. Trying to move the affected part of the body or putting weight on it is very painful. Some people hear a snap or a crack when the break occurs. Control bleeding. If a wound is present, check for any significant bleeding. And if bleeding, apply direct pressure around any exposed bones. Apply padding around the wound or above and below the wound. Apply a clean dressing loosely over the injured part. Immobilize the injured part. 
Reduce the pain and the risk of further injury by supporting and immobilizing the injured area. Usually, this simply means supporting the injured part in a comfortable position. Always immobilize the injured part with bandages, slings, and splints. Make the patient comfortable. Help the patient into the position of greatest comfort without any unnecessary movement. Use blankets, pillows, or clothing for general comfort and support. Place generous padding around the injured area and in the nearby hollows of the body using soft towels, clothing, pillows, or blankets, etc. Always stabilize the injured area in position found. Use splint if necessary. Monitor and treat for shock. How to splint a fracture of the upper arm. You must quickly splint a fracture of the upper arm after the injury occurs to prevent additional fractures or damage. A person with a fractured arm should not move until the arm is secured tightly to the body and splinted to ensure the bone stays in place. Fold a piece of cloth, towel, or scarf into a triangle. Make the upper arm sling. Tie the ends of the sling together at the base of the neck making sure that the tightly drawn knot rests on the neck so the arm is held securely to the body. Find a hard straight object to use as an upper arm splint to keep the arm as straight as possible. Some first aid kits have straight wood or plastic pieces in them that you can use as splints. If you don't have a first aid kit, use a board, sturdy stick, thick rolled up newspaper, broom, or anything else you find that is sturdy and straight. Snug the straight object tightly to the outside of the arm. Tie a long rope, belt, scarf, or other long object around the splinted arm and the entire body to hold the arm in one place. Adjust the sling so the injured person is comfortable and the forearm is held securely in place. Fill any gaps between the arm and the body with soft folded cloth so the injured arm has nowhere to move. Seek emergency medical attention immediately. A broken finger is a common injury people often suffer during athletic competition, work-related accidents and falls. It is usually a minor injury, but it still requires prompt treatment to help reduce pain and speed up healing. If you want to know how to treat a broken finger, follow these suggestions. Recognize the signs of a broken finger. Symptoms of a simple fracture can vary in intensity, but usually include some of the following. Acute pain at the site of injury. Immobility and dislocation of the finger. Redness or discoloration due to bruising. Swelling and tenderness in the area of the break. And bone perforating the skin. Take action immediately after being injured. You can take simple steps to reduce pain and swelling after suffering a broken finger. Ice the finger. Apply a splint or use a rigid item like a pen to make a temporary splint. Place the item along your finger and wrap your finger and the item together with tape. See a doctor for a complete diagnosis and treatment. A doctor will want to take an x-ray of your hand to determine the severity of the injury and the proper course of treatment. If the fracture is more serious, a doctor will apply a splint to the finger after resetting the break. Some breaks may require a cast.
Alright, today we're going to do a collarbone fracture. If your casualty has a collarbone fracture, alright, his arm, whichever side is injured, will be straightened. Let's say my casualty has a right collarbone fracture, he will let his hand hang loose at one side. And you try to prevent it from moving by holding on to his hands. Alright, as such. Now, when this happens, okay, you need to gently move the arms from this position into a resting position like such, okay? But first you need to tell him what you want to do. Okay, so first say that I'm gonna move your arms right from this position to touch your other chest. Alright, so we're gonna slowly only bend the elbow. Notice that I only bend the elbow so you can slowly remove your arms into this position. Then you get the casualty to use the left hand to hold on to the right arm like such. Now next you take out the triangle bandage Open it up, take out, take it out. Okay, careful to have keep the safety pin one side in the pocket. Take out the triangle bandage. Open it up. Now you see it's actually very wide. So what I need to do, okay, is actually to connect the two ends together to get the loop over here. All right, and you put it through the elbow area. Now do not raise the casualty's arms as this can cause pain to the casualty. You will then slide to the wrist area, wrist area, and put the two ends through the wrist. And then we will tighten. We will tighten. Now once it's tight enough, okay. Today we're going to do a jaw fracture. Now usually now, when the casualty, since the casualty is wearing a collar T-shirt, I can actually pop the collar like up. Now, so what we're going to use to actually hold on to any form of fracture is actually a triangle. Now, once you're ready, you can get the casualty to relax the arm, please. Now, let go of the hands. Okay, we'll take out the triangle bandage. Now, when they are in a relaxed position, then you want to tie up the triangle bandage. If the casualty is actually now, once holding on to your bandage, it's actually a very bad thing. We actually brought the bandaging so you do not need to unfold it. Casualty relaxes. Right. Now, the bandage will then put it on the palm. Now, so after you jog, and on the count of three, you tell the casualty you're gonna close the mouth. Under the one, collar. two, or three. Pull out the collar. Now, bear in mind it's very painful, so you have to do it fast. And once you're done, Use your other hand to hold on to one side of the bandage, pull it upwards. And that's it. What's the head resting on top of the head? This position for me. You have all the, the other edge riding on behind the bandaging ear other than the like collar foot. Okay, now turn to the left. You have a look, it's actually behind the ear to the right. It's actually in front of the ear. Alright, so now what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a twist. It can be up either on the left or the right. It's up to your preference, but for me, I'll do it on the right of the casualty. I'll then use the one on top, the one pointing upwards to go forward and the one pointing downwards to go backwards. Now you have to find a flat spot of the head and then on the count of three you tell the casualty I'm going to tighten the bandaging. As this is going to be a very painful process, you have to warn them first. Alright, one, two, three, tighten. Alright, then you're going to call up for head. Head. arm fracture. Now, usually when you a casualty tie the lower arm fracture, back, you come to you with the arm span 90 head. degrees, the other hand supporting the arm right. itself. That is broken. You're going to tie at the back of the head. Right. So, and whether you can use for fracture is the same. How you triangle do the bandaging for your so triangle bandage will take out head. for head leaving. Alright, All right. you will then keep the, rest the bandaging with the one layer of the bandaging like this. Pins, okay. then we'll open up the see it's very nicely secured. Right. If you open you it up, hold the jawline, long edge, the and then there is the short edge, which is the apex. So you have a cross over here. here. Now the apex, apex will always point right. towards the it will be injury in front of the, the injury here. Which is, all right. So this is how you is the right side, I'll point it to the right. At the end of the left, I'll point it to the left. Now, so if you pointed to the right, what I'll do next is actually I will slot it in below the elbow area where there's a tiny space. Now, I'll put the one on the inside on the injured side while the one on the outside on the opposite side. At the same time, we will then spread the bandaging slowly covering the entire broken area until the knuckle line. Alright, we will then pull the other side to cover the other edge like this. You can actually get the casualty to slowly remove the hands, supporting it for him first and then supporting it outside. Like this. Okay. We will then adjust the bandaging so that it is more comfortable for the casualty. Take note, my apex is still on the 
elbow area. Right? Next one, we'll do the same thing. If there is a collar for the casualty, we'll pop up the collar. We'll tie, we'll get the casualty, sir. Can you please relax your arms? Totally relax your arms. Alright, making sure it's still 90 degrees. If not, we'll adjust slightly until it hits 90 degrees. Careful only to do small motions. After In this section, we have understood what is a fracture and the various and types of fractures. A knot. fracture is a medical right. condition in which there is a break the in the continuity of the bone. The, the degree of pain will and vary and accordingly here. to the okay, nature, sure first, location, and severity the of the injury. Only this section will help you to recognize the signs right. and symptoms of fractures, which will help you okay, to administer the right first aid treatment.